I want to talk about this science behind how smells of of people can attract people to each other mm-hmm. or within humans, I think this is. Yeah. There's a study that was done with humans mm-hmm. where the certain, I guess, smell or pheromone or whatever it is that some people emit, people are are, are subconsciously attracted to other people just based on on this. Right. And it's not necessarily like looks right. or or anything like that or personality, it's smells. Mm-hmm. How did How did this whole thing come about? So it was called the smelly t-shirt study, um, okay. or that's at least how it's referred to. And it was, yeah, they had, I think it was all, um, they had women, like heterosexual women smelling the t-shirts of heterosexual men. And they smelled them and rated the smell of the t-shirt on its attractiveness, you know, just just based on the smell. Um, and I, I'm sure they, you know, accounted for like soaps and deodorants and things like that. Like mm-hmm. they probably had people just wearing t-shirts and people women reported that they were more attracted to the smell of a t-shirt if that person had a complementary immune system based on their genetics um, than if they didn't. And so our immune systems are super diverse. It's the fastest evolving part of the genome. There's tons of changes because we're constantly battling with pathogens and right. you know bacteria, viruses, whatever. Um, and so there's a lot of variation in the immune system. And so if you find someone whose immune system is very different from yours, your children will have a much stronger immune system than if you find someone whose immune system is very similar to yours. Because of the children have a combo of both. Exactly, yeah. So it seems like we have some way of smelling that um, just based on, you know, based on, uh, yeah, what's coming out of our bodies essentially. So how did somebody come up with this theory to do this test? I don't know. I mean, maybe someone just noticed that they really love the smell of their partner. I mean, that's, you know, like anecdotally, it's a thing, right? You like really like how someone smells. I mean, my wife says this about me all the time. Yeah. She says she likes this the way I smell in the morning. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, maybe weirdo? she's smelling those jeans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know what inspired it. But um, but yeah, they did the study and, and people were able to smell that difference um, and found it attractive, which is amazing, too. That's so crazy. Is this in mm-hmm. animals, too? I'm sure it is. Um, yeah, because animals also have such a stronger sense of smell and mm. such a deeper connection to smell. Um, you would imagine that they're doing that as well. And it makes sense from an evolutionary perspective that we would have this ability because people who can smell that in potential mates would have ch- more children who can survive for longer. Right. Um, so, so it seems reasonable that we've evolved to be able to smell our partners sniff out the best partner for us from an immune system perspective. <laughs> right. So, okay, on the hierarchy of attractive traits, do we know mm-hmm. where smell is? Oh, I don't know. That's a great question. Yeah, like if someone has like, you know, a $300 sports car, but their <laughs> smell is just, uh, <laughs> how are you going to rate them? I'm sure well, someone's done Well, look at divorce rates in America. Yeah, I yeah. think <laughs> that'll uh, knock that one over yeah, in, yeah. in a heartbeat. <laughs> Um, but no, but like on like, uh, what about like physical appearance though? Like, uh, I'm like, did they, did they look at this kind of stuff at all? Or like, uh, like communication skills or, or personality traits or yeah, I don't I know, mean, eye color, anything like this. That's the thing with it. You know, any study like this is like, you're just looking at one variable at a time. And yeah, so as right. soon as you start introducing more things, it becomes Make, so yeah. complex. Yeah. Like with the work we did with the divers, you know, we did these simulated dives where we had people hold their breath, put their face in cold water. And we called that diving because your body responds like you're diving, mm-hmm. but it was like, they're not under pressure. Their whole body isn't submerged in cold water. They're not active. So when we actually measured some of the same things in the ocean, all of the measurements look different um, because you know suddenly this heart rate drop wasn't there anymore because they were moving really actively in the water. Um, so it's like, you know, in, in any of these studies, unfortunately, we just get this like tiny snapshot. And right. as soon as you start to incorporate more details, then it's like the whole thing blows up and it becomes very hard to study from a scientific perspective. Yeah, that's so interesting. And it makes me wonder, you know, looking at the way our environment is involving with technology, where most kids now are on an app scrolling through pictures of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's how you're finding your mate or your whatever, depending on what your goals are. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you're not you're not sitting in a room with them. You're just looking at a picture of them and you're basing it off off a still photo, Mm -hmm. not even like a like a 
like a 3D photo, just a 2D flat from one angle. You don't get to like walk around them, see yeah, what the shape yeah. of them is or or anything like that. Well, and it could totally explain this phenomenon that I feel like we've all heard about where it's like someone sees someone on, on an app and they're like, oh yeah, they're super attractive. And then they go out and they're like, I just didn't feel the chemistry. Like there was yeah. no chemistry. And it could be that, I mean, it could be that they were really bad at conversation, but it could right. be that your immune, you know, your body was picking up on the fact that this person is not a good potential parent to your offspring or something. You know, um, it's yeah. interesting to think about chemistry, maybe literal chemistry. We right. may literally be smelling whether someone's a good match. Yeah, I mean, and I imagine like, I imagine there's got to be a, a, an abundance of other things that you can't really put into words, right? Mm -hmm. Other than the person was like, tall and handsome or whatever right. it is um that 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 you know not smells not things that are obvious to our five senses mm -hmm. right that that's something that's going on like yeah you know you talk like people have gut feelings about things all the time like mm -hmm. how do you explain that right yeah and I mean, yeah, if we can smell this one thing, you know, it's something that's easy to test for because we know how to look for particular regions of this, you know, immune system part of your genome. Mm -hmm. So that was an easy thing to test for in yeah. the study. But there is so many other things that we could be smelling or picking up on or, you know, these things that we're observing that we're not recognizing that we're observing um, yeah. that are contributing to that feeling. Mm. Okay. I want to also, I want to I ask you about um, when it comes to, People who are, because I know people like, a lot of people like this. I don't know how it's changed over the decades. But um, when it comes to people who like have trouble conceiving, mm -hmm. um, there's all these evolving technologies that are coming out that are helping people um, have kids. Mm -hmm. Whether it's like freezing their eggs or freezing sperm, vice versa. I don't know how it all works. But there's a lot of people, a lot of which... Um, who I know who are my age in like their mid thirties and they can't have kids to save their lives. Mm -hmm. And they're trying everything they can to, to, to have children. Um, I've had people, I've had experts in, in this field explain to me that that's a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily like from a moral perspective, but from like a, a evolutionary um, biological perspective mm -hmm. because it's supposed to be the body the, the, the case they made was that's like the body's w or the the that's evolution's way of filtering out mutations or something like this yeah um i mean you know it's complicated because, and it's also age i think right. age has a lot to do with it yeah so age is a huge factor um you know there's a reason they call like i think it's like 34 and up women geriatric pregnancies which seems crazy you know i mean it's like not that oh, old. that's what they actually call them that yeah yeah wow. yeah i forget if it's i think 34 is the cutoff mm -hmm. at that point you're geriatric because at that point your risk of having some kind of of you have your your child have some kind of genetic disorder is just so much higher um and that's because you know as women we produce all of our eggs um right up the, at the beginning and so the longer they're in our body the more chance there is for mutations to to mm -hmm. build up um so that's something you know, that's happening. It doesn't mean you can't have a healthy child, right. but it certainly means that your risk is higher. Right. We used to think that that was just women. Men also, we are finding, have more mutations as they age. So the the chance of passing on those mutations increases as the father gets older as well. Um, so you've got, you know- Interesting. Ingredients going in of questionable, um, you know, the, the sell by date is we're getting close there well, as you're getting Robert older. Robert De Niro had a kid and he's, yeah, yeah. he's like 80, right, I think. Right, right. Yeah, so there was actually some really incredible work done in Utah um, because there are a lot of families in Utah that have, you know, 17 kids or something like that. And so they were actually able to look at the rate of mutation over the however many years those kids were born and see which mutations were coming from the father, which were coming from the mother, and how did those rates change. And they did see a difference in the number of mutations that was inherited from the father as the father got older. Um, but then you also have this factor of like, maybe people aren't having kids not because of any of those biological reasons, but because of um, like forever chemicals in the yes. water, like that affects fertility. I think microplastics affect mm -hmm. fertility. You know, there's all these other environmental stress affects fertility. So it's like, what's driving those individuals not to be able to conceive? Is it biological factors? Is it environmental factors? <laughs>